So we are at uh, European Crowdsourcing Week in in in, in, in Brussels. Uh, Ari just uh, gave your uh, keynote about uh, uh, about uh, Nimber, uh, crowd delivery uh, platform. Uh, so, what is it? Uh, Nimber is a is a platform that connects people that can help each other. So um, we uh, were inspired by a. <coughs> Uh, an unfortunate accident where there's a lot of packages on the road and we try to figure out, hey, you know, everybody took that package. As, we were, as the police were stopping by and all the cars were, you know, passing by, everyone could pick up a package. Um, and ultimately that's what, you know, was the birth of Nimber. Can we create a delivery solution that uses uh, what we already have in abundance, which is, which is spare capacity, people going somewhere, and can they take something uh, for you? So taking what we've always done, have you ever asked a friend? Uh, hey, John, uh, do you mind picking up my keys or taking it there because they're going anyway? Um, what Nimber is about is actually expanding that community from small using technology to a much bigger community of people to create efficiency. Okay, cool. And, and, and then how did, how did you start? Uh, well, you know, we started with an idea. So the nucleus, as, as I just said, was, um, was this unfortunate accident. And then you had that realization, you have this light bulb. Um, and uh, I've I'm a, mem a part of the team that started the company. And there's this light bulb saying that we can create a great service if we could just match um, what is an abundance supply. So we started off in Norway. We um, went to work. The first uh, version was horrible. <laughs> you know, uh, of course, <laughs> it's oh, always yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, we try to recreate what uh, delivery companies do, and that's kind of where we, I think, we failed. And then we looked at what. So, uh, so uh, uh, which part did you fail? Well, you know, the traditional. Uh, okay, so what does someone need in order to deliver something? Okay, weight, size, diameter, this, this. You know, no. Okay, on page four of the, and we say this is anything but simple. Um, what you want is to be able to request delivery in ten minutes, or sorry, ten seconds. Sorry. Uh, you don't want to be filling forms till you're, you're, you're crying. <laughs> um, and what you want is to be able to have the ability to connect efficiently. So there are other models out there that use technology. There's bidding platforms, uh, aggregating delivery companies. Um, but we want to connect between people with people uh, because we thought that would create that would solve two major issues for uh, for consumers, and that is one is convenience and at times price. Uh, people need to send something from one place to another. Um, maybe if it's this big, it's a, there's a good solution out there, but as soon as you go out of a certain size, uh, you're disadvantaged. So we thought people could do that. So that's how we got started. Okay, and then you got some friends together and you built a platform and you started, or how did it go? Uh, well, we got people together where that had a different expertise. I still don't know what mine is. Uh, not a kid, of course. But um, no, we had, um, we, you know, just like uh, most uh, startups, we went to the board, started drawing down what it could look like. Um, and after the second, third, fourth iteration of it, we came up with something we thought was pretty good. And we started telling people about it. And that's kind of one of the power of uh, our solution is that um, people embrace the concept. You know, it's, a, it's one of the, it's the easiest. I've been around for a while. I've had many businesses. Uh, it's probably the easiest elevator pitch I've ever had. The concept resonates. Of course, the execution and the delivery of a, of a viable service that follows is much more difficult. So, and, and what was difficult about that? Well, we uh, think about it this way uh, in a two sided marketplace. When you have, um, think about a Sunday market. We all love vegetable, fruit, Sunday markets, go and pick some fresh produce from uh, local vendors. Think about if you had all these people coming in, but there was no vegetables or fruit. <laughs> or think about the flip side. Um, everybody had their fruit and vegetables and nobody shows up. So what you're actually building is you got your first stand up <laughs> and someone's got some watermelons and then you got someone who comes in, he's looking for pears or she's looking for lettuce and you're like, <laughs> please come back tomorrow, hopefully we're working on it. And slowly you're picking up the, the, the um, supply and demand side to create a, a service that works. So uh, Rome wasn't built in a day and neither was uh, crowd delivery, but it's literally about making sure that you're able to meet people's needs and it takes time and uh, patience. Okay, and, and, and what are all other disciplines do you got in your, in your uh, team uh, of, of, of builders? Um, so we have, um, uh, we have, uh, our company is actually uh, broken down to, well, first of all, we're a team, and I always, like, as, as, as a CEO of the company, my job is to enable 
people to be successful on my team. Um, and it's our team. So uh, if you look at back in the day, businesses were a triangle where the guy at the top uh, reaped all the rewards uh, and worked less hours, had fat lunches, and got all the um, uh, credit. I kind of see things differently here. Um, my job is to enable my head of product uh, to have the resources, have the ability to create great solutions, um, to give the tools and um, uh, if it's funds to the uh, marketing people, um, to enable our community people. And I think that's actually, we have product uh, marketing uh, and community. Uh, community means how you deal with people after they sign up. How do you help them? How do you discuss with them? And how do you understand their issues? So those are the four areas we have and I can break it down further. But uh, you know, pretty much a platform, um, and get people to use it. How yeah. simple? And yeah, uh, and now uh, because uh, you started in in uh, in Norway. Yes, we started we started in Norway, and approximately six seven months ago, I'm not sure, or five months ago, we moved the company to London. Norway is a beautiful country, but unfortunately, it's um, uh, it's a small country. So um, if we were going to take this concept beyond uh, Scandinavia. We thought we need to enter uh, uh, to operate out of a very large market for various reasons, and we considered Germany, the U.S., and the U.K., and we settled on the U.K. ultimately. Okay, and 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 why U.K. from the different uh, opportunities? Because my German is not as good as my English. <laughs> uh, uh, I do speak German, but uh, according to my children, not that well. They're embarrassed when I do. Um, no, I think. Like anything, you make a decision based on all the the needs of a. Of a uh, this wasn't a concept. We were an operating business or a company with people and families, and you looked at what each mark, each uh, each place would give uh, the, the 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 positives and the challenges that comes with moving the company there. Um, the U.S. was too far, and we also had other concerns about the U.S. market and so far as this model. Uh, Germany was a great market and we hope to open there soon, but we ultimately said that the UK provided a great ecosystem for talent, um, financing, and uh, also a very dense market. Yeah, and, we, and, we wanted yeah. to actually, the, the, the number one ideal place for us to, oper to open next was actually Holland. Um, because a very progressive uh, society that loves new ideas, very dense, uh, the, the distance between um, uh, Rotterdam and uh, Amsterdam was approximately an hour. Uh, first city in the second city, and that's where you have most of our traffic, so we could pretty much launch it very quickly. Yeah. Um, but uh, in the end, you went uh, because your Dutch is is, is, uh, is also not as good as your English. My so you Dutch went is to, uh, <laughs> to London. My Dutch is as good as my Japanese. Uh, okay. Yeah. I don't speak Japanese. So. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, uh, go, uh, for first, uh, going, uh, going, back, going back to Norway, uh, uh, when you look at, 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 at um, um, uh, uh, what are the most successful uh, 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 travels for the packages? Uh, is it through cities and, and, and what is the average distance? Uh? Okay, so, uh, Nor and this is kind of the issue with Norway. Norway is not only a country, as I said in my presentation, that's bigger than Germany in size, just slightly, but it is bigger than Germany. Uh, but it doesn't have that many people. There's approximately five million people just there, thereabouts. Um, that means it's not a very dense place, um, which is a problem for anybody involved in crowd. Moreover, the distance between cities is about five to six hours. So if, uh, if you look at the number one city until the four or five largest city, they're just not close. So they're approximately 500 to 700 kilometers away from each other. And the Norwegian highways are not that great. Uh, in fact, sometimes the highway is just one lane in Norway. Um, so that's, you know, naturally we see the most traffic between the biggest cities. And that's because you have the largest amount of people there. Yeah. Um, so uh, Oslo to Trondheim, uh, uh, Oslo Bergen or Bergen Oslo, Bergen Trondheim, uh, Stavanger, those top cities. Um, and the average uh, delivery initially was about 450 kilometers. Yeah. Yeah, but the good thing in that is is, is that that's probably the, uh, the price and, and the revenue for the drivers is is is, is higher than when they uh, transport uh, like uh, this from an hour. Yeah, it was quite high actually. In the reality, the average there was much higher than we expected. But what people were moving out there was things that made sense to them. Um, you know, winter tires, for example. Um, uh, people would buy them cheap from one place, and uh, the cost of delivery of having them thrown in someone's car. 
actually meant that they were a much better value proposition for them. Uh, also, people want to move things that are um, fragile, sentimental. Um, people move animals. I, uh, I have a pet, pet cat. Um, well, I have a cat. I'm not sure if he knows that he belongs to us, but <laughs> he just hangs out there. Um, I never moved that cat from one place to another, but people move pets. Uh, yeah. Fragile things, things that are important. Someone even tried to put their mother-in-law, <laughs> which we don't move people, <laughs> but I thought that was funny. <laughs> and uh, what, did, well, what did the insurance company think about that? <laughs> uh, they, they, they didn't, because we, we, we said no thank you. But um, no, uh, you know, it's, there's something that's hidden here, and that is that people were willing to, in the past to just drive to a certain distance and back. People would do that. If you bought a guitar that you wanted and it was two hours away, you get in the car and you go pick it up. But we think that's a waste. And now we have this whole blue ocean of the ability to move things and also for people not to buy things, new things, because they could access them from yeah. further away. So we uh, teamed up with uh, Finn.no, which is the Norwegian uh, equivalent of eBay, and to help people because they realized that they could use a solution uh, to increase their economics. Yeah. Because uh, they knew people would only buy things. Yeah. a certain distance. Yeah, so you, so you started searching for, 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 for great uh, partners with, uh, with the same values uh, where you can add value for each other. Exactly. So yeah. online classifiers is a great example of that. Yeah. Finding people that you could, uh, you always know, say if you want to sell water, find people in the desert. Uh, <laughs> so not sure if Antarctica <laughs> is the place to go. Um, and yeah, so that, that proved very good because people had a challenge there and we could solve that problem for them. Yeah. And then you went to London so, uh, or, or to the UK, so it's a complete new country. So how did you start over there? Um, well, it was tough. You know, we had to get people to move. As I said, uh, that wasn't easy. Some people. So you really uh, moved the office from uh, Norway to to uh, to London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, it's uh, easier said than done because there's a lot of uh, there's a cost to pay there, uh, both the people and some people don't have the ability to actually uh, move. Um, but we made it, and um, London is a fantastic city. I could do with less uh, pollution, um, but it's an amazing place. It's also a great. It's a. It's a. I was going to use the word mecca mm -hmm. of gathering, <laughs> but I can use that. It is the. It's a great place where people from all over Europe and beyond that are are coming to London, and it's really. Um, it's like it reminds me of New York back in the day. Yeah, so yeah, it's pretty cool. And, and um, what's your strategy over there? Uh, are you also going to focus on, on delivery uh, between some cities or are you searching there for other uh, interesting uh, partners like, uh, like uh, platforms? Well, it's, you know, when you spend a lot of time in this business, you start realizing something very simple. The distance is just something. It's just distance. So if it's from, from over here, it's from Brussels to Charleroi, or it's from Brussels to Paris, or it's from where we're sitting right here to across the street. You need to move something, you need to get something. So we are now, we don't consider into, you know, that's why we look at the various models out there where we can make a difference. Um, our vision for Nimber is that you're able to actually access a cup of coffee from your favorite cafe or a pizza and just say, I like that to live in someone passing by would say, ah, yeah, for a year I'll do that. Yeah. Or even as a favor. Yeah, so there are also, also possibilities, like you all said, that uh, during your keynotes, about uh, the, the uh, doing groceries and then gets the option, okay, do you also want to <coughs> take some stuff for your neighbor with you uh, for, let's say, three euro or whatever? Yeah, so, you know, you know, Nimber is two things for me. One is a, is a, is a service that it's, it's a community of, uh, of people that realize that they can create a great solution and they can either, it's like eBay, one day you're selling, maybe one day you're buying. but. Uh, they could actually you know, help each other out. And of course, there's a financial incentive here, and it's important. People should get rewarded for doing something or reduce their travel costs. But um, we realized that, uh, let's put it this way, what we found out about delivery is that it's not economics. And it's literally the inconvenience of trying to deal with delivery. Now, if someone leaves something in your postal box, that's fine, or drops it in front of your door, it's fine, but the coordination and communications um, will deliver at five o'clock. If you're not there, you miss it. You gotta go to the postal service, um, or the, uh, the, the postal shop. Or they'll come back again tomorrow. It just seems wasteful, but people are much better than that, and, and that kind of leads us, you know, they can coordinate, they're flexible. If you say to me, oh, I'm sorry, I'm at my son's soccer game, 
it's, there's an extension, so I went to overtime, I won't be there. He says, you know what, I'll drop it by an hour later, or, or you'll tell me to put it behind the plant and we can do that, yeah, companies yeah, can. Yeah. And this makes me think that crowd is able to actually meet other needs, like supermarket delivery. Yeah. Why get all these cars on the road and you have all these people coming there and they're all fanning back out? Like Ikea, could we get to the point where if men all over the world don't have to go and spend a day in Ikea? Can we liberate? Would be great. <laughs> yeah, can, <laughs> can we forward. outsource? Hey, listen, whoever's there right now, I need this, 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 and this, and you can be late because I don't want to do it today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now you're, uh, you're also, because you also said, uh, uh, said uh, during your keynote about your matching on interest, uh, so you're also really focusing on the social part uh, and not uh, 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 on the uh, money part of, 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 of the deal? Well, I. Uh, you know, insofar as if I understand the question correctly, um, we, we're in the business of matching people. And I know that's uh, the, ultimately, once again, we're not creating dates or we're not getting people with like-minded ideas or, or, or interests. So it's not a chess club matching. Um, ultimately, the ability to get something from point A to point B is our business. Um, but we focus heavily on people on what triggers them and what they need in order to make a great service. Um, we actually get a tremendous amount of feedback from our uh, community about what they want and what this isn't working and they'll tell us and I, they're brutally honest and some of them are really brutal but you know what that's great news they're telling us they care. Um, when it comes to pricing we uh, you can put zero. You know, for example mm -hmm. you don't actually you know you don't have to pay anything if someone's willing to take something for you for nothing, that's great for us. Um, we don't think it's very practical, but if you are a nonprofit, the other day there was a Norwegian um, profit, um, not for profit organization that was uh, raising clothes uh, to um, for, for the Syrian crisis, and uh, people just said, "Yeah, I'll take it. I'll deliver it." Yeah. So. Yeah, it's cool. And and but. Uh, isn't it because I'm thinking uh, because uh, you're really listening to, uh, to your crowd and 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 do what they uh, expect from you and and I'm based on that uh, you're changing things. Isn't it uh, a danger that you are uh, uh, um, uh, making your uh, model perfect for the early, early adopters, and then you miss the opportunity to scale up to the uh, the other majority of the, of, of the people uh, because maybe. Uh, the same like uh, 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 with uh, uh, with car sharing. Um, the really hardcore uh, uh, starters, they uh, they are really the social people. They think it's really uh, important for for, uh, for the environments. But when you look at the majority of people, they just want to make a uh, uh, some money out of it, and 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 their social um, motivations are uh, uh, much uh, uh, smaller than 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 the initial group. So don't you think that there's danger you are then uh, yeah, making your product perfect, but only for a really small audience? Just, just thinking about it. Well, I think there's a good, the, the question is very valid. Um, you know, we look at everything as when we make decisions of what we, will we implement, what we change, we look at a cost-benefit situation. What are we taking away? For example, if sometimes you give too much choice, it can be confusing for people. You know, if you hard code the price versus giving people to choose the price they want to set their task at. So the things like that we look at all the time and try to figure out how we can delight people. Um, but we're constantly learning. We also, insofar as what is the, for the early adapters versus, then no product is ever finished. It constantly evolves. And it normally evolves based, if, if, if a company's smart, based on what the market's telling us. Because the market always, I always say to my team, the market's smarter than our marketing. Don't tell people you know, why they don't want what they want, <laughs> or that they want this, you know. You ever go into a car dealership and you say, yeah, I'm looking for this. You're like, that buddy, but you may want to look at this baby. <laughs> then you're being sold. Um, so we think that our product will evolve and it will move and actually, you know, there's, could it be a situation where we have a Nimber marketplace and a Nimber city deliveries where uh, you just, you know, we. We say, hey, it's five dollars from here to here. If it's more, it's ten, seven dollars, and so you don't have to have the back and forth yeah. between. Sure, and um, there, there are a lot of things we could do, but ultimately, think about the platform as independent. That's going to evolve. We have people who want to send, or businesses that need to send things, and we have people who can actually deliver. And our job is to make sure that that works. Yeah, and 
at what way are you now lowering also the threshold? Because I think uh, also important to scale up is to lower the threshold uh, of, of uh, hassle uh, you have to do before you uh, have something uh, or on a platform or uh, in delivery. So I'm, I'm also talking to, to quite some startups also in the, in the ride sharing uh, 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 industry and also talking about, okay, why don't you just make a, a link uh, with your uh, Google uh, uh, schedule? And then automatically you see, okay, wait, you're planned to go from there to there. I have a package, so can you help? Are you also thinking about different ways to load the threshold so it, it makes easier, but, but also it will uh, be really a part of the people's daily routine uh, of bringing uh, stuff with them together for others? Yeah, well, of course. So, you know, uh, we're constantly trying to see, number one is to make things easier. And how do we actually do that? If, you know, um, how many times, you know, did you, uh, back in the day when you were scheduling something in your calendar, that you had to leave the calendar, go find the map, the link, to put it back in there, and suddenly you see you know, that's being added, the ability to quickly do that. So having the ability to create, to delight people and make it easy, is ultimately going to make the service more popular. And it's going to make people, you know, because right now, maybe it's too complicated for some people. Maybe it's not worth their time. Our job is to make sure that we, we meet that need and ultimately keep, we keep to our value proposition. Yeah. Uh, about creating something that's sustainable, that's convenient, that's simple, um, and uh, over, overall loved, um, we'll be able to um, create some great things for uh, different uh, types of people. Cool. And 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 uh, your, your next step probably will be uh, Germany. Um, uh you know, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, you know, it, it could be. Germany is a very interesting market. We think the French market and the Benelux are awesome markets. Uh, the Polish market is very interesting to us as well uh, as an anchor uh, towards, uh, as we head uh, toward eastward. Um, but we think that everywhere is, is a great yeah. place for Nimber. And, and, and what about competition? Because what you see, because uh, I know some other platforms who are doing uh, a similar, uh, similar services. Uh, they all got their special uh, strategy, but in the end, uh, 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 they're, they're uh, offering uh, a likewise solution. And what you see now with the car sharing industry, I think it, it's, 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 it's a little bit ahead on uh, the trend of the package share industry. Uh, you see that the, the growth strategy is, in the end, some people they think, okay, at the end, there can be only one. And they're now like Snapcar and the Dutch platform. They uh, just today, they announced that they bought the, a Swedish competitor. And uh, half a year ago, they bought a Danish competitor. So uh, first question is, is, is what is your growth strategy? But also, do you believe that in the end there can be only one big European player or is there enough space for different uh, platforms uh, offering a likewise solution? Let me answer the first question. Uh, I mean, our strategy is to uh, successfully launch a service in, in the UK and we think we're, we're, we're on our way there. Uh, we've got some major partnerships that we have been already in, put in place for us to, to work with. We're having a tremendous amount of love of, uh, in, within the, in the UK. People are spreading the word, and we're having a lot of people sign up every day. So that's working well. Um, we want to go mainland Europe. Uh, how we go and what priorities, that's something that will change over time. It depends on circumstances. But um, and so far as your second question, I think about this a lot. About um, you know, is this a winner-takes-all or winner-takes-most uh, situation? First, because I have a responsibility to uh, my investors. Uh, but more importantly, it's because I wonder what the impact would be. You know, um, I forgot what movie it was, but be careful what power, you know, be careful what you ask for. And I think about Uber and think about, you know, are we uh, replacing one monopoly with another monopoly? So um, I, don't, I, I think that you, you, would have, you could have a situation where you have very, very popular services. In fact, you'll see what we have today in the world that you have three or four um, you call it uh, a printer makers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not that many. You, it's not many car manufacturers per country. <laughs> um, I do think this is going to be a, a market by market um, model like eBay. So eBay was very successful in the UK, but it, it lost out on France and, and Belgium. I don't know. Where yeah. They won Germany, but they lost Ireland. <laughs> yeah. Um, but ultimately, there's going to be consolidations. There's going to be uh, people come together and saying, hey, can we join to create a much better service? So I, I, don't, I don't know how it's going to go. Um, I know there are other companies out there that are trying to do similar things. Uh, what I do know is that we're very focused on our thing. We rarely look 
at what others are doing uh, unless they have great ideas. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> yeah, I know. And we're and not they all do the same, so that's <laughs> no, well. You know, uh, be, people are copying us, which is great. Uh, you know, it's, it's a bit frustrating because so much work goes on it. So think about like a, as an artist. However, someone told me that um, if you're not being copied, then you're really in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's, uh, that's, that's that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is. And um, you're going to do a, uh, a meeting uh, with the uh, European Commission uh, later today. So what are you going to talk about and what are your main concerns on that? Um, well, we are working um, actually there with a group of uh, sharing slash access, access slash collaborative economy companies. Because it's very important to differentiate between the different types of businesses out there. Um, Uber is there. Uh, Airbnb is there. Um, I think blah blah car and there's a few other companies that's presenting you know, alongside Nimber. Um, we want to impress uh, on the European Union in general that the sharing economy or collaborative or access economy is, is, is very good for the economy um, for various reasons and we want to make sure that the European Union uh, or the Commission is able to look at regulation uh, specifically in my in our case in Denver as far as taxation, uh, insurance, uh, cross-border deliveries. So mm -hmm. what happens when I ask you today, Martin, um, can you take something from uh, from here to Amsterdam and you're fine in Belgium, but as soon as you cross the line, you've, you've broken 18 different laws. Uh, that's not very conducive for a cross-border digital market. So those are the things we want to talk to them. And, and you know, from our point of view, we're very easy. Uh, there are other companies that have a much bigger agenda. I would say Uber uh, and Airbnb, they have much bigger challenges um, yeah. because of the space they're in. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Okay, so. cool. So thanks for the interview. I Thank you so much today. And I'll talk to you later. And I'm looking forward to what is going to happen, happen next. Well, thank you so much for having me. Okay. Thank you.